Well, good morning, as uh, we're sitting here at LTV on this beautiful morning. Indeed, a beautiful morning, Tuesday morning, April 23rd, year 2024. And my name is Haim Mizrahi, continuing with the tradition of public access and the tradition of the Hello Hello Show that's been on the air since 1980. Of course, not to fail to mention the contribution by Fraser Dougherty, Francis Ann, and of course, the likes of you out there that make it your business to enhance and fortify this, uh, this concept. And rightfully so, as we uh, kind of uh, <clears throat> experiencing, uh, uh, when you, one finds oneself experiencing some kind of an emotional, spiritual turbulence, um, and even those who are the uh, the experts and the experience and people who know a thing or two about certain things like that that take place and they're ready, even them, they have difficulties digesting and adjusting and there may be some kind of a tiredness, you know, where you find yourself uh, um, um, fed up kind of thing, you know. But even though fed up is just just another word, you know, when and reality unfolds. But if it's in the face of that background of yours that has the edges that are artistic and and playful and and accommodating and, um, and you know all the qualities that like an artist that is a, like a hands-on day in and day out artist will have all these edges that are dispersing all this goodness really at the end of the day um, out of all of the artists that I know I don't think I, I, I know even one grumpy individual or one individual that is kind of feeling emptiness and uh, yeah well maybe as artists we can feel emptiness when we're facing a certain piece of art or work or canvas or whatever it is and uh, but not about life not about the virtue of life not about the quality of the immediate surrounding and for that sake I'm actually oh I didn't bring it did I bring it yes I did bring it um but uh, yeah, so it's Passover, and I wanted to also, of course, uh, wish the uh, Jewish community a, a happy Passover, and um, also also spring break, which is uh, in itself a big deal. And um, so, uh, of course, speaking when I speak of public access, and when I speak of my personal involvement and role with this concept and this reality uh, naturally it it kind of continues uh, only to blend and to uh, find itself uh, uh, in a familiar reality in a familiar uh, discovery And like I think I, I can uh, communicate best is when I can um, pay attention to certain aspects of our life, especially when it comes to creating, you know, to paint a painting. And to want to have this art, this painting, be nothing less than exquisite. And to utilize all your abilities together and really make it a point and make it your business to feel that level of importance and to find yourself engaged in it. Because you know that on the other end, the world itself is kind of... Uh, sitting on an edge where um, a lot is at stake. But in the same token, that individual journey of yours is something that holds so many things that you're not even aware that it does together, solid, as one piece, as one uh, angle of presentation, as a 
as, as another way to look at things and also to make sense for you personally in order for you to stand balanced and stable uh, in that uh, in the equation that's called uh, you know uh, i don't know uh, what's right and what's not and uh, uh, how much and how so and uh, and and you want to um really uh, Amazing. Wow. Okay, so uh, the task at hand, as people, as citizens, as uh, um, uh, uh, community members, as then on top of that, uh, make it uh, uh, to be that their presence will spell creativity, creations. You know, when people paint paintings. And if it's as good as it should, could definitely, but should be, then societies are safe, safe to go because people wake up in the morning and they think about that next moment that will ignite the moment from the day before in order to continue something fantastic and wonderful and tasty and loving and appealing and pleasant and, and constructive and and uh, strong-minded, but in, in a way where, you know, all these wonderful positive things are not only crisscrossing, but intertwining. Um, and, and then, you know, like, okay, I'm, I'm speaking of uh, offering a, a, a gestures to make people believe that the world is not against them, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, so uh, again, yes, that's what I think I'm going to do because it's apropos 
and all this uh, I I must do this now because it's um, something that I forgot to do and I guess this is uh, you know the uh, the decision for a person to be okay that's very good so uh, yeah it's going directly to the okay that I'm going to do Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, uh, I think I can share something with you that even though I can really sit here and by the way let me just mention a few things that are important uh, the ongoing group archers here at LTV uh, we have Frank Sofa on display now uh, through the first week of May the opening is this coming Saturday um, April 27th year 2024 3 to 6 p.m. And we're having some really interesting artists coming our way. Yeah, I'll probably be able to share it with you in this coming week. But we're ongoing when it comes to the monthly art exhibitions and uh, and the fact that uh, we uh, uh, can rely on some kind of a consistency. And here at LTV, it's just unbelievable. It's second to none. It's also second nature for the system to be of such so you, you're talking about the uh, um, um, the, uh, uh, the 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 nonchalant way of understanding community and giving to community, and making community aware of important things that are extremely available. So, in in, in that sense, it's uh, it's. Uh, it's something that you just have to become a part of. And then even if you're passive, you will be benefiting from it because it's just all over the place. Community relies on that. Community understands the necessity uh, to have one. And um, and also just, it's okay to start taking it for granted while, while once you have it. So you'll find yourself more at ease with the fact that you're actually engaged in that creative process. How many people can relate or try to understand about this kind of feeling related to a process that you never experienced but yet uh, feels very familiar? Uh, how, how many people in the world you can communicate that with? Well, plenty. If the common sense and logic in place will be a given in the sense of that. But of course we need to do about this. But of course we need to know about this. But of course we need to know about that. But of course we need to know about everything that's surrounding us, especially creative process. You need to hunt for it as much as you think it's going to be visible and obvious and evident. You, you have to, to struggle for it, to fight for it, to just make yourself available and make it evident that you're available and then nobody can take away those achievements because once you're genuine to this degree you find yourself as if there's a, a, a one-sided discussion that is for some weird reason acceptable in the in the uh, requirements for progress and breakthroughs and and whatnot you know in that sense i Yeah, I, I, I don't want to know the 
I don't want to know that which I cannot accept as as a uh, relatable item that I should give it a stage or a, a right of way to operate in a territory when there's no justification, there's no, you know, the, there are no receipts, there's no uh, stab of any kind of a payment, there's no agreement, there's there's no justification, you know, so suddenly you become uh, um, more kind of crucial in wanting to know what are the credentials, you know, and it can be really still if you still and after all the only person in the room you know it's good that these can these kind of uh, active uh, acknowledgements realizations contemplations guessing and whatnot alive and kicking and i don't uh, i i i um how you know I, I just don't want to find myself going in a certain way where I know that actually just 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 right there I'll be realizing and, and realize that I'm going to have to turn around and come back and I won't say start all over again but you know choose this way rather than that way because there's some consistency in your knowledge uh, based on experience that you know exactly what's going to happen there or at least enough to say that you're going to get further than if you were to go this way. So, but all these encounters are like seconds. So it's not like you're dwelling uh, uh, half an hour thinking what to do or not to do. It's really instinctive. Sometimes you could say that if you take the biggest villain of the last hundred years, I mean, you can actually blame all the atrocities that these individuals were responsible for only because, uh, you know, on a certain day, 10 years prior to that, when they were walking and they had an appointment somewhere and they kind of mixed things up and they did, they, you know, they, 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 it was very difficult for them to arrive there on time. And then because of that, they decided not to go there altogether. So that shift between continuing another one mile straight forward and making a slight left, uh, uh, then to as uh, then to, uh, you know, slowing down and making a sharp right and getting whatever, ending up in the library, whatever. How this could have made, spelled the difference between that which so terribly happened and, and caused so much damage and so much hardships. And the other one actually caused exactly nothing. It, it just promoted normalcy. How many people can relate to the level and the weight of importance of, when it comes to normalcy? Something is just simple, the same pretty much as yesterday. To promote normalcy, oh my God. So if I want to speak about this normalcy, I have to bring to the equation factors that maybe do not exist in your life, even though they must exist. And it's all about location. It really is all about, it really all about, is all about location. Uh, where you, have to make a point to yourself today, every day kind of thing, even knowing that it's just kind of, sometimes it just gets to a point where it's just a useless repetition kind of thing. But you want to find yourself knowing a little better than that. So you know, you say to yourself, uh, just as much as I will be jealous for my time in the uh, the studio for example if it's something i was thinking about all day long or all week long or there's a plan and i have to follow it because this is what i chose for me and this is what this community chose for itself by having me a part of this community and then you do better you do more you you kind of uh become more and more really one with the whole idea of what it means to have a group together to have a community together 
to have parents with kids with kids and parents and activities and schooling and education and you know decency here and there decency here and there and, and even more so here and there and it just accumulates and this accumulation is nothing less than than wonderful and then when you sit and reminisce and think about it you say oh my god all this greatness is being created uh, on behalf of an accumulation of fairly simple things you know there's some kind of uh, even annoying factor to it that uh, by this person showing me his or her stubbornness they're actually showing me showing me a commodity of theirs and, and i should respect that and appreciate it but because you come from the world of art and you are actually dealing, let's say, with people that are trying to get into the world of art, there's a whole different spectrum uh, idea of a uh, of, uh, point of reference and uh, relationship uh, that that you instantly know that the, the, the difference and the distance between one and another is greater than one and then the average person out there will uh, will uh, arrive to understand, you know. So maybe maybe if you can think about it further and kind of maybe verbalize it and maybe summarize it in a very basic way, maybe so this is something that can be available for people and people in their right minds. Just kind of how can we say uh, intelligently uh, normal. Uh, will be able to benefit from that you know I, I still i'm still waiting for those 18 liners that hand it to you and you read it and you say whoa that that's something i want to i think i'm going to keep this this list i think i'm going to keep this list i, th I think i'm going to memorize this list something that just tells you this and you're in good hands because these hands are yours you're in good company because this company is you, yourself, and you. And you reflect through the whole world as the, the whole world is reflecting through you. But so, so, yeah, you already realize you cannot reinvent, invent. You cannot, you cannot create something out of nothing. You can, re you, can, you can think that you created something out of nothing, but you, but you realize quickly enough that you're actually only recovering something that has pre-existed. And maybe it's not even such a good idea to... Uh, to, to try and wonder too much about its origin because its origin is maybe just kind of the moment before which happens to be 200 years ago that's how far the moment before is just and you can add a few more zeros if you want so but you started from from this whatever I, I don't want to use the word shrine but just just a very pleasant playful shrine okay you call it studio and cottage somewhere that you have a lot of light as you like. You don't have too much light as you like. You know, all the things that you like will be there. And maybe there will be a reflection of who you are. Or maybe they won't, but you really are concerned about that there are other doors in this vicinity. And even though you're, you're the only one there, uh, each door is just an opening of that which will come from a different world and an opening for that which will go through this door into the whatever head lies. And then you realize that you have somewhat of a control with it. And how do you control it? And how do you achieve that control? It's by being playful. You're playful. You work hard. You think deep and whatnot, but you're playful. You know, you can now, you can think about it a drum beat you know I, I whenever i think of a double stroke power diddle <laughs> if i if i was to experience any panic attacks probably i wouldn't need any medication i don't think i would have to think about this power diddle and power power diddle and double stroke power diddle i'll be safe emotionally you know i can go like this for hours Nothing can enter this shield of music and rhythm. And the same in front of the canvas. And the, and the same with so many other things. And then at the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the month, this attempt, this effort on your behalf will find its way out there to end up wherever it needs to be ending up and having a hundred pairs of eyes or a hundred thousand pairs of eyes laid on it. And it, suddenly nothing becomes relevant to, to the real importance of that moment. You know, triumphing, triumphing, prevailing. 
allowing your achievements to find their wind and their uh, accumulated definition, you know, that's just happening because something is moving, not because something is thinking. They believe that the origin of this wonder and wonderful thing that they're experiencing is based of, on on their on on that person that sat maybe a group of people sat and thought about it and sat and thought about something that they thought is a good idea to think about. How do you think abstract expressionism came? You know, they all think about they all speak about the magic of the era. You know, of the forties, the thirties. You know, and I never in this one thousand hundred fun thousand years would ever imagine that I would end up let's say being an artist in the east end of Long Island and it, it eerily eerily close to some great names oh but here is where Jackson Pollock was and and the Kooning there and the other here and they're all and they're all over the place and, and then you wonder not because of where you are because you are a wanderer you're a philosopher you already trained yourself because you always, always, no matter what, at what degree, at what level, you always played music. And you kind of were introduced to poetry in a very unique way, meaning I don't come from a, from, from a family that is established poetically, even though maybe there are more than I will ever be able to think that there are. But the point of the matter is that you you grow in an environment where you end up to have maybe an alcoholic dad and this and that. But that alcoholic dad can be a poet with a spiritual soul that struggles because this is the nature, this is the fragments of life and what it really means, the journey of life. So certain things are kind of find their way joining this journey of yours alongside you. Somehow they find their place. Nobody complains, so suddenly there's another thing that kind of follows with you. And of course you realize it's a part of who you are, your personality, your attitude, everything, your soul, your spirit, you know, everything combined into that walking human being, you know. And you accept that at that face, simple, simple face level because you want to be able to hang on to it as long as you can, as long as possible. So, what, what is it that makes me feel that, that it's important in a very specific, specific, special way? Yeah. You know, so much so that you... you suddenly in a very cliche way finding yourself uh, as if <laughs> you can't do anything other than just one thing kind of thing and you don't understand how you come. you're drawn into that suddenly you it, it, it's it's mother nature standing and saying here yeah, i think it's about time you make up your mind and if mother nature tells you about you it's concerned about you making up your mind it actually is trying to communicate with you that you need to put a rush on it a little bit for a little while. That's it. And then when you catch up with that flow of motions and emotions, you're just in for good. And from that source of goodness, because you assume unconditionally that we're talking about goodness here. Goodness meaning that I don't have to really love you to this, but I can allow you to just live the way you want to live because I'm just going to do exactly the same as you will. And we will now and then meet and chat and drink beer together and have a little snack or something and maybe exchange notes. So then, so, so think about the abstract expressionism. You know, what, what, how does this come about? Mainly because the painters of the era were fed up. They were fed up since almost like the early stages of their artistic attempt to make sense, to change the world, to change, to, to have a, a, a minimal access to modernism. But they tasted enough in order to say, 
no way, no way, things gotta change. <clears throat> and there, let's just say a bunch of a dozen of them <clears throat> in the forties, early forties, suddenly finding themselves discussing issues relating to. <clears throat> well, maybe that is not a good idea, and maybe that's a very good idea. And then the discussion opens from there. And that's what happens when a dozen people that are really at the height of their game, if I can call painting paintings a game, but a scenario of that which is absolutely crucial for society to to thrive at, at any shape or form. So I just try as hard as I can not to find out that actually I messed things up and that's why I'm facing this kind of monster heading towards me. And I kind of have nowhere to go. Is I got to go through this crash here. Unnecessarily. Oh. It's, it hurts to know when you know better and when you know better but still nevertheless make the mistakes even though you know better to know better than not to know better. And you know, no, you, do, you knew, you knew better. And then, okay, so that hits you. And I, a few times, a few times go, you know, a few incidents of, of realizing you made a mistake, not big mistakes, it's just like a, uh, a, the wrong judgments, so to speak, you know. So they're sitting there about 80 years ago. And just like maybe it's, maybe they're somewhat bored because they're peculiar individuals. Give me a break. You know, William de Kooning in his like late 30s or something, you know, what kind of a individual this guy was. This guy knew nothing but what he wanted to know. And no matter what he did in his life other than painting, the time that he actually put hands on into this, I need to paint, I want to paint, I'm going to paint, I'm painting, is are you... You, if you were to, to, to accompany him a day in the life of William de Kooning in the early 40s, or for that sake, even if you take Jackson Pollock at his good years, you know, when he really sobered up and realized and he was free with the help of his partner to really explore, to really speak his piece. So now he's doing that and also he's meeting with his kind of friends. No, no one thought of the other as a friend. They're acquaintances, all peculiar. And except in their peculiarity, <laughs> it as a given, you know. And they like that because, you know what? There's always something new, something interesting that comes out of a, a mouth of one of them. And, and their minds are working together. But they're not thinking we're changing the world. They're just thinking... This is a way to survive this whatever short journey we were giving on the planet Earth. And we are who we are. We accept it as such. And we're doing something about it because... But it doesn't mean just, just because we're painting paintings. We're not human beings. We're not husbands. We're not fathers, even though we can be questionable. Or community men and women. And we are. But they're sitting there and actually they're shaping the future, the for the next hundred or maybe even 200 years of generations after generations after generations being introduced. And now days in, in, the, in, in the 21st century, <laughs> she's talking about things happening really fast, but still nevertheless it happens the same. How frequently it happens has a different story, but that doesn't affect the fact that all we need to know is that it's happening in this capacity or that capacity, but it's happening. So, yeah, let's think about abstract expressionism. They put it together very meticulously thinking about 
the fact, well, we don't want to talk about abstract. Abstract is abstract. You cannot define it. You cannot shrink it. You cannot summarize it because it's absolutely independently, individually unique to everyone. And that's a given. I accept it, it as such. I never deal with it. I never, I'm never dwell too much because I'm. It's it's clear for me, and it's also clear for me which which is my way and how is how is the way that I think of what it is. It's my own personal interpretation. You won't have to worry about it because you're going to experience it when I'll introduce to you a small body of work, and then you will say, "I understand." But what what's up with expressionism? Expressionism is just because they thought it sounds cool and it's a good idea. Therefore, it was put in place. Anything that you're going to bring together with abstract will work. I don't. I don't want to be too cliché and start giving you example about abstract realism and imperialism and this that that is in industrialism and. But. The the most interesting thing that took place there is that when you speak of expressionism and choose that as a you know maybe to a certain degree so, as a gimmick word and but not intending to do make it this whole ordeal gimmickly or gimmicky but rather than just because they want to act on something that they just suddenly realize that is important like the expressionism aspect of it meaning that is endless you're gonna sit there and express yourself and that's gonna have maybe end up being something that you will do all your life but guess what? It's, but that's going to be something that we're going to be exposed to all your life mixed, you know, superimposed onto ours, you know. So I'm, I'm, so I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. I don't know. I, I don't want to know because already at the very beginning, what did I do? I accepted it as a face, basic, simple value. And, uh, and, and, and I won't say that's that. I, I would just kind of wait to hear what, What's happening around me and energy wise is has to say, and usually it's very snappy. It's just like you know a, a, a nodding, yes, of course, yeah, 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 it works. So they're sitting there. I don't even want to contemplate if they were consistent in their meetings or not because it's, like, it's ten o'clock in the morning. They're still drinking. They're already drinking and. And martinis and beer and whatnot and espresso and not really healthy life. Sleep deprived. Even when they're sober and clear and rested, supposedly, they all sleep deprived. Maybe heavy smokers. Mostly um, cigarettes, no filters, you know, just smoking. <laughs> Getting high, you know, and I'm sure they smoke grass then, you know. I'm sure they did their thing, you know. I'm sure they didn't have three meals a day. And if they had three meals a day, it would be like, but there's something that was just there. Can't wait to get back to my studio and fire this heater and just feel like I'm good to go for more time and more hours than I know I will be there. A good feeling to start the day, to continue the journey and to look forward in the back of your mind, to look forward to, to that moment of sitting with those peculiar individuals because we are forming and erecting a concept and it has a name even, abstract expressionism. So now in our time, the benefit from it is that I would say, you know what, I love these people. I could have easily be, been one of them, you know. I could have really easily joined them. They wouldn't even know that someone new joined. They would feel like I was there all along and therefore I will listen to them therefore I will follow their advice therefore I will ask for their permission to use the that, the basket that the the concept that they supposedly invented to put together is is finding a home as that if I can borrow that to take uh, because I know how much, how many benefits I can get from it. So you want to come to me and tell me abstract expressionism? 
love it, but just for a couple of seconds, because we're going, baby. We are going. We're flying. We're diving. We're free falling. We're just going with disciplines, even though we're falling, free falling, and it's coming, whatever it is. But we are it. We come across like everything is okay because it's under control, because it serves a purpose, and because we won't bother ourselves with the crash, you know, whether it's going to take place or not, because it's going to be out, outside of... That means that crash would have to take place outside of ourselves. Get it over with, fall to pieces, become evaporated substance, but whatever is left of it is welcome back. So, yes, it happened. You detach yourself because you're in a process that has priority. And that priority is really allowing you to say, wait a second, let me just press pause here and I'll be right back. And you really know you're going to be right back. And you really know that this pause is a a gesture of tolerance. They say, okay, we're going to allow you. Usually we don't. They don't say that, but usually they don't. It's okay. You said you want to pause, you want to be right back. That's fine with us. We're here. We're not waiting. We're going to be here because we're here. We're going nowhere. So there's so much that you learn when you go in this path of, okay, I seek A, B, C, one, two, three. I put together somewhat of a, trying very hard, that's compatible with. So... The the envisioning, the imagining, the contemplating, the thinking, the digesting, the philosophizing, the spiritualizing, the socializing, the eventually becoming a loop that, that you feel like, okay, I, I, I achieved something. I made that change in whatever way he chose to think that it's good for it, but then it, the end result will be that it's still around. I can still benefit from it. It's not like, okay, team one, two, three, boom, venturing into the future, into the unknown. It's remaining here. That loop is going to guarantee you about a couple of years of that, of the presence of this goodness around you. Not a bad way to think, don't you think? Not a bad way to think. Maybe a little complicated, maybe profound, maybe sophisticated, maybe whatever you want to call it. But it's there. And you have the tools to understand that A, it's there. B, you can use it. And C, you know how to use it. You know how to extract from it. You know how to benefit from it. And you know how to reach a, le- a level of camaraderie. That camaraderie is in un- mutual understanding of each other. I know you and what you do. I know who you are because of what you do and how you do. I can relate. I can appreciate. I can, And I know that you know the same about me. That's a good feeling about having other things, other people be, be in your life, allowing, allowing them access. I don't know, but if you, you choose the words, you know what I mean. But then you still never left that studio, and you're thinking about this unique group that many years ago, and you say, maybe whatever happened, happened the way it happens because the angels were there. Some angels, they just looked down and said, this is interesting. Let us dive down and join the bunch. And just infest that, the energy and the reality and the time and with so much magic and so much, wow, forget about it. That's why we sit 80 years later and any baby and every baby knows what abstract expressionism or realism or modernism and all this, they, people know what it means. People know, people can point out what it is and where it is. People can relate, people can benefit, people can learn from, people can look up to. And they're all becoming what they shouldn't think that they needed to become because they were already always in this and that, whatever. And, and that's that. And, um, uh, and the rest is history. You know, the rest is history. Sometimes you need to learn how to just let go and say, well, uh, I can let go and I won't be afraid that suddenly I'm just going to find out it's not there anymore. Uh, things like that don't happen, really. 
They really don't. And uh, let me just see something here if I have time to. Yeah, I have time to read this poem for you. But it's not a poem, it's just a. Uh, Not a poem. I remember that, I don't know, 35 years ago I had a conversation with my sister and she was the, the poet of the family. And my father was, yeah, he was an alcoholic and whatnot, but he was, was someone who can build a piano and a flute. and he, he, He's someone who would, any musical instrument you put it next to him that he'd never seen in his life, he can play it. So I was scared to find out the intensity of that father that all I knew about him is that he's a rough intelligent potentially has potential and everything but he's an alcoholic you know he's uh, fighting his demons you know he got caught in a web unfortunately for him and for us as his kids that we find ourselves in this scenario but I was like too busy feeling sorry for my dad maybe that saved my life because it, I, I, I didn't I didn't I wasn't I wasn't able to hurt myself so much otherwise so I was more focusing like Look at this, this, look at this lion of in the jungle, look at this king, look at this ruler, look at this organizer, look at this leader caught in his own demons and using all his, the power and all the energy and all the strength that God gave it in order to save itself from something that could have easily maybe uh, not have been there to begin with and, and allow this individual to thrive have the kids and this not, not that we are today we know today we don't have to be we don't have to be like extraordinary individuals to be great parents you gotta love you gotta show yeah you want to play ball we play ball you want to take a walk play with you want to go have ice cream let's go have ice cream you want to talk about the moon you want to ask me questions that i cannot answer even though you're like four years old and i'm like a middle-aged man or whatever this is what it means to be a good dad. A good dad. so when I when I was looking at uh, at, at 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 him, I was saying like, oh God, I wish you could make him feel happy. Because he deserves to be happy. So what if he's incapable to to elaborate and to make things happen and prevent himself from making terrible mistakes and paying dear price for it, and having so many people suffer because of that? Let's give him a break. I was. Praying to the forces that were unknown to me, that I knew they were existing. Come on, show your face, bail him out. It's my dad. He needs it. We need it. Look at this potential. Look at the brightness. This brightness comes only uh, in the shape of angels. Come on, bail him out. Just give him a little zinc and, 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 and allow him 30 years of showing his what 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 his real purpose in this world is yeah, and so I, okay you know what i can be theatrical and i can maybe help myself prolong my journey in this uh, by improving the chances that this longevity of mine will be okay you know getting 90 years on planet earth okay maybe even more okay it's going to end all going to end up to be short and like a touch and go happening something over but it doesn't matter. You play your role. You think anything or anybody out there heard me? Every time I seek the help of angels and say, come on, I summon you in a playful way to come save my family, save my dad. And you can be five years old and you say, why, why, why I cannot get an answer? Why, why, why I cannot even, I don't care what kind of an answer. Yes, no, something. Maybe we're on our way. Let us think about it. Something. You think ever ever out of the 10,000 million times that I prayed and thought and contemplated and wished for and experienced that anybody anything any force showed up and say we got you covered you know what was it that you said you need okay done never so now 
this, these are millions and millions and millions and millions of families and kids and children and parents and all this that go through that. That crucial point of, of no return where you are just about to fall to pieces and you're six or seven or eight years old because it's enormous and there's nothing and no one around you that can understand what you're going through and what you're about to go through now. Yeah. Nobody can even begin to understand that they can play a role in saving this miserable, poor, pure, good soul in the shape of a baby that even began to live his or her life. Millions and millions and millions and millions. So, yeah, I wanted to say, you know what? I grew up in a family where my dad was an artist with two dozen mediums operating nonstop, 24-7 on. You should have seen the guy. And he was the mayor of his town. And then he ended up to be a wealthy man and a, a philanthropist. And he raised us. Forget about it. Look at about. It. Look, look, look at us. He raised us. I would have loved to say that. You should have seen my dad. The powers, the 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 gifts granted from heaven, that made him who he was, and how fortunate we are. And I feel I'm fortunate to be the son of my father. No matter what, it's really no matter. But how? What was the real story that was missed? We missed out on. What was the real story? How was it intended to be? As a kid, I was able to think about this thing and to actually think that this is actually going to work for me. Why? Because I can get to a certain point of with a certain certainty that I'm actually understanding what's when, where, how, what, for, how come. And then the rest I'm allowed to improvise in order for the deciding how it, how when it's going to be initiated, in what style it's going to be initiated, what flavor, what pigment. And, and, and believe me, I'm not just making it up. This is things that I'm, that were the result of my thoughts, my thinking, my wishful thinking, you know. I wish my dad could have had what I thought he deserved to have. If only that he can be happy. Forget about us, his kids. Of course, we're going to benefit from it, from everything. Even one random gesture of love will never be forgotten. But do you, you know what I mean? The life that he deserved to live, to have lived, and so. And but but I never, luckily for me, never found the uh, being you know like sensation of like resentment because I'm uh, you know because I I don't get that, that and therefore I don't get enough love or the love that I deserve that I. Have, entitled to all this and that uh, you know and this is something that I want my kids to think in 20, 30 years from now and say gee what a person he was forget about dad mom this what a person you know you look at you look at you look at that you know what I mean you look say my these, these, these are my parents. Unbelievable. I, I love to think about it, and I love to you know, find myself actually engulfed in that uh, reality that speaks uh, for the fact that I can easily benefit from it today. I don't need a structure of complexity that uh, defines and describes the kind of parents your parents wanted to be and how they succeeded or failed. And the combination of it all. But rather, you know, like my father taking me to the market with him every Thursday evening because he really loved me and because he thought that I would like it and it would make me happy. That I can never forget. I can stand in front of a canvas. I don't care what size of canvas you put in front of me. Bare, naked, white, nothing, zero. Solid, no reflection lousy lighting colder than it should be harder than it should be not balanced but I have everything I have the canvas and paints and brushes and all this and then I say okay if I need to think what it is that I'm going to do now yes I'm going to think about that gesture of my father taking me to the market now how much power was it 
or was in it. Yes, a lot of it. And then how? Huh? What is this, that little thing that can just condense and kind of houses every and all information in it of that moment? Yes, I was able to identify it. And, and isolate it from the rest. Then you look at it. There's no way that a painting won't come to mind. There, grab the brushes and do whatever it wants. Do it slowly. Do it fast. But you're doing it nonstop. You don't stop. You don't stop because there's a composition to create. There are layers to create. There's drying time and and muddiness and clarity of pigment uh, that is involved. That you know that you can control. That you have experience. You've done thousands of times before. And then you keep being a straight face with the process of that memory. And that memory was all about all of what you need in order to execute a great successful painting that will make people feel good and will make people feel like they want to be artists themselves, do it on their own. This is how you maintain the equilibrium of a society, of a community, where you won't sit around and contemplate what awful thing is just about to happen soon? Because so many things are going wrong. So much is up to no good. The energy is contained, contaminated and tainted. And, and yes, there's goodness. Yes, definitely there's goodness. But what you see is the face of kind of evil suddenly forming shape. And then you say, wait a second. Am I supposed to protect myself from this? Or does, does it know not to mess with me? That it can only reveal itself and that's it. That's as bad as they can do. But you never know because your instincts tell you this thing charges on you. There will be nothing left of you in a matter of seconds. Who wants that? <laughs> you want to just say you see it and you say, okay, I got you, got you covered, man. Respect. That means you want you want to respect this this evil. You want to say I respect, I understand. I have no beef with you. Don't no, no, don't want to mess with you. I'd like to be around for much longer. There's a lot of work to be performed, and I aim to perform and and to deliver. So, and trust. I trust that actually this is the manifestation of. That which was allowed by the scheme of things of the creator, created us, whatever, superpower, whatever you want to define it. It doesn't matter what the clear, specific definition is because we will always be wrong about what it is. That, And of course, what's the nature? What's the origin? What's the this? Then the fact that it cannot have an origin because if it has an origin, it cannot be God Almighty. But, so is this entity, is, is, it, is it also responsible for its own creation? You know, things like that. And then who wants to go there? You accept that something very intelligent and maybe passionate and considerate and good by nature put this whole scheme together that I will be here evident and talking to you, hearing myself talking to you. And by doing so, I hear talking to myself, hearing myself doing that too. And painting and playing music and this and that and writing just thoughts and creating images and adjectives and descriptions and elevations and music and breathing build up. Wonderful, wonderful. The more sophisticated it is, the simpler it becomes. And the simpler it becomes, the more profound and sophisticated it becomes. You push up. It's like Tai Chi. Even though Tai Chi's business is to, to, to snap and kill and devour and all this, Still, if you don't know nothing about the composition, the grid itself, it's still wonderful calling the chakra, compressing it and sending it down. Everything that goes down, something comes up, everything comes down, everything goes up. You know what I mean? So, so it's not like you have to to guess too much, you know. You don't have to guess that if you're like, oh, why do you like this? If it's so pleasing, the source, let's say, let's say. If there is a watching eye, whatever, it's like, so what is it going to be that the watching eye will say, why, 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 why is this doing, why is he doing that? What good does he or she find in doing that? 
or that this reaction won't take place because it's just not meant to be interfered with. Once it was set free or set on its to be on its own, can I? It's just only observing. Can any interfering spells instant end to it all to the game? It's a pause that is eternal. You cannot re unpause it. So yeah. Let's just say that I just ran out of time. But anyway, I just want to share with you, we're going to be here tomorrow as much as we were here yesterday and as much as we hear this morning of Tuesday morning. Um, what is it? Uh, April 23rd, year 2024, here with the Hello Hello Show. And my name is Chaim Mizrahi. Don't forget the opening for Frank Sofo, um, April 27th, Saturday, between 3 and 6 here at uh, LTV Studios. You're more than welcome. We'll see you soon. God bless. We love you.